Okay, I think we'll get started today. Again, thanks everybody for coming on board. Uh, my name is Tom Ferris. I'm the Director of U.S. Sales for Alliance Corporation. Uh, we have Joe Schrammel. Joe is the Marketing Representative at Bridgewave Communications. And Lisa Travers, who is our uh, Marketing Director, she's running the control board today in the background. Um, so, I want to give you, I want to start things up today. Our main topic of conversation is to discuss the, uh, the new Bridgewave product line of uh, advanced licensed microwave products. We're going to give you a couple of minutes on Alliance before we get started with, uh, with Joe Schrammel. Um, my contact information is up on the screen here. As most of you might know, Alliance Communications is a value-added distributor of wireless broadband equipment. And I just want to make an announcement. We just recently opened up a new facility in uh, northern New Jersey. Uh, we are literally about 30 minutes outside of, uh, of New York City, and um, we have a new stocking facility here with plenty of different uh, broadband as well as wireless infrastructure products, including cable and steel. And we also have drive-up service and local delivery, local messenger delivery here in the New York area. So if you're working here now and you want to come over and uh, stop over and see us, please do. If you're visiting the New York metropolitan area and you need a place to make some phone calls, please feel free to give us a call and stop over to our new offices in Lincoln Park. So Red, uh, Alliance is a leading distributor of wireless infrastructure products. We have facilities throughout Canada, the United States, Max Mexico, and Latin America. Uh, we have an extensive uh, product catalog, including a variety of different uh, RF electronic products, as well as infrastructure products to support uh, cellular contractors, and any type of wireless installation accessories that you might need to complement your installations. Um, we have personalized expert assistance from industry veterans. Uh, the sales representatives and uh, technical representatives of our company have all been working in the wireless industry probably for a minimum of about 10 years. We've all worked in a variety of positions from manufacturers to uh, integration companies ourselves. So we have a lot of experience in the types of environments that you're operating in and could add their value and support to what you're doing. Uh, we try to make independent recommendations. You'll see from our product line in a few minutes that we do have a bit of overlap out there because we try to uh, pick the best products for our customers. We also provide pre- and post-sales technical support as well as training for most of our product lines. And we actually do level one and RMA support for several of them. And as I mentioned earlier, we have presences throughout the Americas. With regards to wireless broadband solutions, um, we have a we, we, we pretty much cover the gamut from wide area network backhaul and transport systems to WiMAX internet access systems, licensed and unlicensed, point to point, point to multi point, mesh, outdoor Wi Fi, uh, and we're even starting to dabble a little bit in the LTE space right now with some specialty products. And to the right you'll see a variety of logos of some of the tier A manufacturers that we represent today. This is a short list. Uh, I'd probably cover a couple of screens worth of, uh, of PowerPoint slides here to, to list them all. So um, anything you might need out there, if it's something that's not on our product line card, we could probably get it for you as well. So we're actually a sourcing agent for a lot of our larger service provider customers. And then I'll just want to make a quick announcement. This is our third in a series of ongoing monthly webinars. Uh, next month, on April 27th, we're going to be featuring Redline Communications' brand new RDL 3000, which is a 100 megabit point to multipoint and point to point platform uh, based on uh, MIMO technologies. So uh, you should start seeing uh, some announcements on this shortly, and we hope to see you back again in another month. With that, I'll turn it over to Joe. All right. Thanks, Tom. And uh, let me just get my screen here going. All right. Thanks again, and uh, thanks, Lisa, for organizing the, uh, the webinar and having us uh, participate uh, with uh, Alliance Day. Happy to be here. Um, wanted to just kind of set the stage what we're going to talk about. Um, a lot of, lot of use for wireless today. What Bridgeway really focuses on are ultra-high capacity gigabit wireless solutions. Uh, we operate in primarily in the millimeter wave space at the uh, 60 and 80 gigahertz frequency bands. Uh, we've just introduced another uh, set of products in the microwave frequency bands designed to give uh, uh, true giggy capacities, and I'll talk more about those 
uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the subsequent slides here. Uh, today I want to kind of show you how Gigi Wireless uh, can yield a really rapid return on investment uh, and uh, compared to say leasing fiber or some other alternatives and I'll also give you some real world examples of how uh, folks today across a variety of different vertical markets are using Gigi Wireless uh, solutions to solve their, net, their tough network uh, capacity and connectivity challenges here. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up here with just uh, talking about the, some of the Bridgeway products uh, that, can, uh, that can help with uh, those solutions. Uh, and um, we'll get going here. So, so, okay. so some of the challenges facing networks today, uh, looking at both uh, the enterprise and the service provider networks, um, there's just, just uh, stealing a, a line from Cisco there. You know, on the enterprise side, uh, you know, uh, corporate land connectivity, business to business connectivity, schools, uh, universities, uh, hospitals, uh, healthcare, education, those types of networks here. There's an increasing demand for higher performance connections to support new business applications. Uh, a lot of, lot of the server centralization happening. Uh, whereas before, with disparate facilities, you'd have um, multiple servers and multiple uh, IT folks uh, maintaining those servers, the software and, and the applications residing on those servers. Um, you also have uh, folks moving into new buildings. You have uh, network connect. You've got to extend network connections to new facilities here, um, and doing it uh, through either licensed uh, or unlicensed uh, solutions or using uh, leased connections, whether they're copper or fiber. Um, and and the, the need for higher capacity, I think we've all seen it in the workplace today, the, those higher capacity connections needing a uh, higher, uh, a, fatter, a fatter backhaul pipe, if you will, uh, to, to interconnect between the facilities here. On the service provider side, uh, you've heard a lot over the last year or so about the, what we call the iPhone phenomena, where uh, your 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 cell phone. You're you're, you're wanting that uh, experience on your on your mobile device that you get on the desktop. Uh, the 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 backhaul on these mobile networks are are just not up to the task of of giving you that uh, true experience. Uh, you know, three or four G experience that you want on your cell phone. Um, your service providers looking to uh, generate differentiated uh, service revenues, uh, triple play services going into multiple. Uh, multiple tenant units or MTUs or, or multiple dwelling units uh, doing uh, voice video and data and trying to provide uh, those types of high capacity connections to support those applications to, to these uh, office complexes or, or apartment buildings uh, or, or new, new dwelling units there. You know, the aging backbone doesn't provide adequate bandwidth, so you know, five, ten years ago you might have put in a 100 megabit link. Um, but you're finding out now today that uh, you've got more services that you're running over the link, you've got more customers, and they're all demanding uh, higher bandwidth connections, and that 100 megabit link or that DS3 link doesn't uh, seem to provide the adequate capacity uh, for those uh, connections anymore. You know, there's also delays in provisioning new services. Uh, which you know you're when you're trying to you know light up a new building or extend services into a, a new facility, uh, maybe doing it through fiber, doing it through a copper-based uh, connection or a land-based connection, it, it may take weeks or months to get that uh, uh, to get that uh, service into that new building. So um, certainly that that's a challenge when you're trying to generate revenues, but you can't generate revenues because you're you're not able to get the uh, the, the building lit up quickly. Um, and then you know lowering your costs to maintain your competitive advantage here. So anything you can do to uh, reduce your 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 capex and your opex uh, certainly helps your your profit margins there. Um, and last question here on the bottom of the slide here: It works today, but what about tomorrow? You know, so what's driving Gigi Wireless in the enterprise space? We'll just uh, look at a couple examples here in the medical imaging uh, and the electronic health records. So in the medical space, we're, we're seeing a lot of of, of hospitals, uh, office, uh, office, excuse me, hospital facilities needing gigi wireless or needing high capacity connections because uh, the uh, the need to digitize patient information, you get uh, uh, patient information being stored at an offsite data center, needing to get that to the doctor who's doing uh, an appointment. You've got uh, MRIs, X-rays, um, high high bandwidth intensive files now uh, needing to get from point A to point B. In the, in the municipal space, uh, the government space, public safety, video surveillance, uh, a lot has been done lately now to put uh, cameras uh, on the streets. 
uh, and uh, with the with a lot of uh, municipalities facing budget cuts, the need to uh, augment the the the, the city's uh, crime prevention efforts uh, have have meant that uh, you know cameras are getting installed in the high high crime areas, and uh, the need to backhaul that IP video information from the cameras to a central uh, monitoring facility is certainly taking place here. And then finally, in the education space, uh, we're seeing a lot in terms of campus connectivity, where you've got uh, multiple buildings on campus uh, needing high-speed connections uh, to support uh, e either academics or, or student, uh, you know, student uh, services there. Okay. Um, looking at the at the mobile market here, the, the wireless traffic is exploding with no end in sight. So this is a graph uh, from a recent Cisco report showing uh, the explosion in exabytes uh, of traffic um, in, in say 2010 all the way up to, to 2015. Um, and in the, in the report, they mentioned that the the mobile traffic is growing at a rate of 39 times between. Uh, 2010 and 2015, <clears throat> and by 2014, 60 cent, 66 percent of all that mobile traffic will be video, um, which, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of putting a strain on some of the mobile backhaul networks. And we're seeing that the at the backhaul is really the bottleneck. So traditional cell sites that were uh, served with say four T ones or multiple E ones um, just can't handle the capacity and the deluge of traffic that uh, you get when you've got the number of people wanting to download uh, the latest YouTube video on their handset. Um, and then, as you see here, we'll, we'll talk about how Gigi Links uh, provide that future-proof backhaul solution. So we're pragmatic enough to know that uh, if fiber is available to uh, the location, um, and it doesn't cost anything, and it, uh, and it's uh, uh, and it goes in pretty quick. That that's what most uh, customers will use. But uh, the the reality is is that uh, fiber doesn't go everywhere. Um, and you know, to get fiber from point A to point B, you can either lease it uh, from a service provider, or put it in yourself. Um, and you know, in in either event, uh, you've got construction costs, or the service provider has construction costs, which they pass on to you. Uh, they've got rights of way. They've got to secure permits. Um, try try putting in fiber in New York City uh, in the in the downtown area and digging up the streets, and then you'll likely uh, be told no, you you can't uh, dig up the uh, streets or the sidewalk to do that. Um, and if you go ahead and lease it from the uh, service provider, there are expensive recurring monthly lease charges. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about those in a minute here, in addition to being tied into you know, a multi-year uh, lease agreement here. Okay? Um, so why consider Gigi Wireless? So, so as we'll talk about here in a minute, the cost for, for high-speed lease lines uh, alternatives are expensive. And, and I'll show you a chart here in a minute, but uh, you know, I've seen uh, Gigi Fiber lease fiber anywhere between say five and twelve k a month. So this this five thousand dollars a month is is on the low side of, of the estimates here. Um, the time to install wireless is much shorter. So if you've got a building that you need to get connectivity to, uh, certainly getting those uh, getting that building connected using a wireless solution can take days as opposed to uh, weeks or months with uh, putting in a fiber solution. Um, or you might want an alternative technology for your primary or backup link. So you might already have fiber uh, between point A and point B, but you need some kind of network resiliency or disaster recovery solution um, for your business, uh, or you know, to, to maintain that uh, that high uh, that high availability or that highly reliable connection between point A and point B. So you could put a Gigi wireless solution uh, in there for backup. And I've got a nice example I'll show you here as we get into some of the applications. Uh, and then finally, for folks that really want control of their network, so being able to uh, being able to control the the network, uh, you control your cost, you control the maintenance, you control the moves, um, things like that. So really, with the Gigi Wireless solutions, uh, we, we like to say that they are fiber-like performance, but without the costs and the delays of implementing fiber. Okay, so this chart here is, as, as I'm kind of uh, scrounging around on the internet, uh, looking at uh, some of the different service providers out there and, and gathering up an average of costs. Uh, you know, for for a T1 connection here in the U.S., you know, we're seeing somewhere around $300 a month. You know, and, and you could say this is plus or minus a couple hundred dollars, but on average, I've seen about $300 a month uh, doing these uh, surveys here. Uh, uh, for a 10 meg uh, Ethernet connection, about 800 bucks a month. Uh, and you can kind of see through the various um, uh, capacities how they scale up to Gigi, 
uh, where uh, we're seeing somewhere between five and, and as I mentioned earlier, between five and twelve k a month here. Um, so for so I'll, I'll use five k in these examples here. Okay, and these might these might change from area to area, and, and your locale may be a little different. But uh, you know, as I said, these are just a sampling of, of what I was able to see from different service providers as I as I kind of uh, went around the internet. Okay. In our first example, we'll take a look at a, a, a company needing to move uh, folks into a remote office here. Uh, they need kind of six megabits to support their network services. So there's a little bit of voice and some data. Um, and they can lease T1 lines, say, at, at $500 per month uh, with a startup cost from the service provider of about $1,000. So four T1 lines at $500 a month uh, for the first year plus the startup costs. Uh, it's about six. Uh, six megabits would uh, cost you about $25,000. Now, you might be there for a couple of years, and let's just take a look and see how uh, a gigi wireless solution uh, might compare to, uh, say, a, say, a three-year lease uh, of that uh, building where you're at. So if we look here at the column on the um, uh, column here in the middle here, we've got the gigi wireless, uh, you get the, the price for the, uh, the hardware, the installation, uh, some additional uh, warranties. Um, just under 18k for 100 megabits, uh, but more importantly, uh, 17 and a half dollars per megabit. If you go to look to lease those four T1 lines uh, for three years, you know you're looking at uh, 72k plus the startup costs. Um, so for six megabits, you're looking at over $12,000 uh, per megabit. So by by just implementing a, a simple 100 meg radio. Uh, for that half mile connection here, you get a 16 times speed increase and over $55,000 savings over that three year period. Uh, if, if for another 10K, you can actually open that up to full gig E speeds, and you've got 167 times speed increase and you still save $45,000 over the three year period uh, compared to leasing uh, uh, multiple T1 lines. In our second example, we'll look at, uh, at a hospital facility here uh, that's putting in a new outpatient clinic. They currently have, say, an OC3 155 megabit connection at uh, $3,500 a month uh, per line. Um, but uh, they're upgrading their facilities. They're putting in packs. They're putting in um, the ability to do uh, electronic me medical records, EMR, uh, uh, over, to the, uh, over to the clinic. And they've got an off-site uh, uh, facility where they store all the electronic uh, uh, files, so they can uh, go ahead and lease that, uh, uh, say, gigi wire, or say, I'm sorry, a gigi fiber line, and then put in uh, multiple connections here for, say, for five thousand dollars per month uh, per line. Um, but they're also going to be tied to a, a long-term contract. So let's take a look at the economics here and how this works out. Okay. So we can actually put in three. Uh, three gigi links and build a ring around the facility there. So you've got a, a, a link uh, to each facility. You build in network resiliency with the uh, with the fiber or with the with the, the gigi wireless link. Uh, and you can uh, and this is all list price too. Uh, I'm sure if you talk to Tom, he might uh, be able to bend you a little bit on the on the pricing. But uh, for somewhere just under 90k, you've got the the price of the radios, uh, the installation, additional warranty. So for around 132k, you've got uh, a full gigi ring built around uh, your hospital, um, and the the dollar per megabit is about uh, 43 dollars per megabit. Uh, to lease the same, uh, to do the same thing with fiber, um, with even, this 300,000 dollars is for just one fiber circuit between facilities. Um, this $600,000 is just for uh, two fiber circuits. If you wanted to put a third fiber circuit in for the, uh, uh, for the ring, it's going to be another uh, 300K. Um, but in this example here, you're, you're saving over half, almost half a million dollars over five years um, with your ROI in just uh, 13 months uh, when you're doing this with uh, uh, gigi wireless compared to fiber. Okay. Oops, sorry. So just uh, one, one last chart here on the uh, TCO. When we're looking at a uh, single, uh, single gigi uh, link, uh, on, in blue or in red here, you can kind of see how the monthly recurring charges uh, uh, keep going up when you're looking at leasing fiber. Uh, and you know, at, at five thousand dollars a month for uh, for three years, you're you're going to pay one hundred eighty thousand uh, dollars 
uh, for that connection after three years. Whereas looking at a Gigi wireless solution, um, providing that same fiber-like performance, the speed, the latency, a uh, lot faster installation, uh, you're under 30K here, and your break-even point is, is certainly within months. Okay? So it's a very compelling argument there uh, on the cost side uh, for using Gigi Wireless, uh, say, compared to leasing fiber or, or putting in fiber between your facilities. Okay? So let's just take a look at some of the applications and see how Gigi Wireless links are being used in the real world here. Uh, so a couple of years back, the city of Quebec uh, had a, uh, a, uh, a number of people had to move into a new facility uh, about half a mile away from the, the, the main building. You can kind of see the main building there on the top, but they had to connect uh, the, the new facility to the corporate land um, supporting uh, their uh, customer relation uh, management, the software, voice over IP data, internet access. Um, and they needed to move the, the people in uh, f fairly quickly, a lot quicker than they could get uh, fiber or, or copper to this new facility. Uh, so they came to BridgeWave and uh, we supplied them with a, uh, a, a G60, 60 gigahertz uh, license free link, uh, provided the end-to-end uh, -end capabilities uh, for their IP connectivity. Um, they've got the full gig connection, so they've got scalable bandwidth for their future, for future-proof co uh, connectivity. Um, and, and they provisioned it at a much lower cost and uh, much quicker than they were able to implement uh, using a, a fiber-based solution. Okay. Uh, in the education space, uh, in the uh, Toronto area, you got the George Brown College, uh, same thing, they've got, uh, they've got nine buildings on two campuses they needed to integrate into their network. They had fiber, but the lease was expiring. Uh, and they, they needed uh, a much more economical, cost-effective way to provide that high-speed connectivity to the buildings on campus. Um, and they came to BridgeWave, and we provided them with a multiple a number of uh, GE60 radios, 60 gigahertz, gigabit Ethernet wireless radios. Uh, they had a complete uh, ROI in less than eight months, and they've got the high-speed uh, fiber-like connections uh, with, a, with a low latency. Um, for their uh, their real time applications such as voice and video. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the healthcare space. Uh, Franciscan Health Systems in the um, in the Washington State area, uh, they had to, they had some aging unlicensed uh, wireless solutions that were much lower in data rate that, that were just not performing for them anymore, um, and the, they needed to. Uh, one of the wireless links went down. They needed to rapidly reestablish connections uh, between uh, the hospital and the uh, service center. So they came to us. Um, we put in a, uh, a, a GE60 link. You can kind of see the, the pictures there on the right-hand side. They needed higher capacity. They were, they were moving toward um, uh, PACs. They needed HIPAA-compliant security uh, in, in, this, uh, particular, uh, in this particular industry. Uh, certainly, when you're talking about patient records and, and images and things like that, the security is, the, is one of the utmost important things uh, to the IT folks uh, in, the, in the healthcare space. So, uh, having a wireless connection that provided them a HIPAA compliant security was very important to them too. Uh, so, the first link went in, and over the next few months, it uh, performed so well that we went ahead and, and built a, a complete ring around the hospital uh, using the five other links. Uh, so. Um, they've got uh, not only high-speed wireless connections, uh, GE connections uh, to each facility uh, to, or to each building in the, on the campus, but that ring provides them another level of uh, network resiliency um, uh, just in case uh, there's, uh, there, there's a failure on the network. Uh, and you can kind of see they projected uh, over a half a million dollars in savings over a five-year period compared to leasing fiber. In the uh, government sector, the um, national um, uh, so the NCC, the National, um, I'm trying to remember what the other C stands for, uh, up, in, up in Canada, up in Ottawa, they've uh, again looking at, um, uh, at looking at connecting disparate facilities uh, and, and, and using Gigi Wireless uh, for this. So they're moving, moving new employees or moving employees into a new building, uh, needed the high capacity connections. Um, the, they looked at the uh, fiber, the cost of fiber, the rights of way, uh, looking at the tax dollars and, and what it would cost the taxpayers to, to, to bring fiber to the new building. They said, no, that's just not an option. 
Um, they also kind of figured that some of the buildings in the um, in the network may not be permanent too. So um, as they're putting a fiber connection into a building that may not be permanent, certainly wasn't uh, an ideal uh, for them. Uh, the national uh, so, so the NCC uh, looked to BridgeWave and brought in uh, some G60 links, and we provided that the GIGI connectivity. Uh, they've got ample bandwidth uh, for all their applications um, with, uh, with a rapid installation. The other unique thing about this was they were thinking about having to put in servers at the new, um, at the new facility, so they'd have uh, multiple, they'd have um, servers at the, at the main facility, servers at the remote facility, um, and then uh, because the users at the remote facility needed that same experience and they thought the only way to do that was to have a server uh, there at the remote facility. But by putting a Gigi wireless link in, uh, the users, they were able to consolidate the servers and only, and only have the one server at the main building. The users at the remote facility have that same experience as being tied on the corporate LAN so that uh, ac accessing uh, network resources from the remote server was just as if they were in the same building tied onto the same land as the server in the main building. Uh, so it certainly saved them time and money in terms of getting, uh, in terms of having servers, multiple servers, and maintaining multiple servers, multiple databases um, uh, at the uh, at the at the locations there. Okay. Um, another nice application of uh, Bridgeway products uh, in the municipality space is the Dallas Police Department. So the Dallas Police Department looked at building um, an IP surveillance network in high crime areas in downtown Dallas. Um, and as you can kind of see, they've uh, installed cameras on light poles, and then right above it there you see the uh, worker in the bucket putting a GE60 link in. So there's actually a ring of, of GE60 and FE60 radios around the downtown Dallas area that backhaul the IP uh, camera information from these, uh, these uh, cameras that are in the high crime areas uh, to a, a, a monitoring station uh, where they've got retired police officers actually being able to uh, keep eyes on the street without having to have uh, patrol officers uh, in, in the area here. So it's, uh, for, for them, it's been a, a very nice uh, way to, uh, to have a reduction in crime in these, in these areas here uh, with the extra eyes on the street. So the Bridgeway products are actually used to backhaul the, uh, the video surveillance uh, images back to the, uh, to the command center. Um, the example here with disaster recovery, um, there's uh, in, in New York State, Cornell University is a, a very, very popular uh, school in the, in the Ivy League. They've already got a lot of fiber uh, connecting buildings, but uh, they went through an exercise about two years ago where they said, you know, we need to, we need to augment that fiber uh, with uh, another, an another solution um, because we're worried about uh, you know something happening to the fiber, the fiber gets cut, and then you know we, we've we've lost the connectivity to one or multiple uh, buildings. Um, so they looked at doing it uh, with alternate fiber routes um, and decided that uh, that the two million dollars uh, far exceeded their budget uh, for um, putting in those alternate fiber routes. So they came to BridgeWave, and uh, we put in I think 14 different uh, 60 gig radios, uh, gigi wireless radios. On campus, uh, and, and now they've got that same they've got that same fiber speed over the wireless link as they do on the fiber links, uh, so that if something does happen to a, a fiber link, uh, the 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 network automatically switches over to the Gigi wireless link, and the students, the administrators, the the teachers, professors at the school won't notice any uh, any difference in their network experience. Uh, as if they were um, on the wireless, as if they were um, uh, on the on the wireless network there. Okay, just a couple more here. Uh, the the broadcast video. We just uh, did a story uh, not too long ago where uh, the Oscar ceremony down in Hollywood, California. The uh, the folks at the Academy of Motion Pictures uh, Arts and Sciences used our our solution to uh, to connect uh, the the Kodak Theater. Uh, to the uh, Chainsaw, which is a post-production company that actually does the editing of the films during the uh, during the Oscar show. So in years past, what they used to have to do was they would put the they would they would film a piece um, at the and then edit it at Chainsaw, 
Um, the, the folks at Chainsaw would take and put that on tape, give it to a courier, and they'd bike it over about, about a mile uh, to the Kodak Theater during the event. They take the tape off from the, from the bike courier, load it up in the uh, broadcast truck, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, that, uh, that would go out over the live, uh, over the live uh, uh, Oscars broadcast. Uh, what they've done now is they put in a, uh, an 80 gigahertz. Uh, this is a, a our new Flexport 83000. This is a three gigabit link uh, that provides uh, connection between the Kodak theater that you can see on the bottom there um, and Chainsaw. So now they're able to take those files and transfer them electronically. Um, that uh, one of the benefits to to the uh, to the Motion Picture Academy folks is it allows them more time for editing and quality control checks of the uh, content before it actually goes out on the uh, on the broadcast. So just a uh, nice application. We just did that uh, uh, last month uh, for the uh, for the Oscar ceremony. Uh, last but not least, here in the applications and the service providers. So Manchester MetroNet is a UK-based uh, service provider in the Manchester uh, area. Um, they had a contract with the uh, city of Manchester to provide what they call CCTV or you know, we, we, we call it the video surveillance uh, applications here, but their CCTV network was, uh, was, was getting big. Um, the, they needed more than the 100 megabit pipe that was uh, avail available to them. So they came to us, we put in some uh, 80 gigahertz uh, giggy wireless links here. Now they've got that flexible, scalable backhaul uh, for those IP camera images. Uh, they were able to do that quickly, uh, as well as being able to move these radios around as they need to move cameras around the city as they're um, putting, in, um, putting in multiple cameras in, in locations there. And you can kind of see the, the ROI was uh, very quick for, these, uh, uh, for the uh, folks at Manchester Metronet. Okay. So that's some kind of uh, wrapped up with the applications here. Let me just uh, uh, talk a little bit about the millimeter wave uh, giggy technology. And, and we're able to, to do full rate, full giggy transmissions at the millimeter wave frequency bands because we've got ample spectrum uh, allocations here, much more, than, much more so than in the traditional microwave frequency bands, say from 6 to 38 gigahertz here. So at 60 gigahertz, there's about 7 gigahertz worth of spectrum uh, allocations, and at 80 gigahertz, there's up to 10 gigahertz worth of spectrum allocations. It allows us full duplex um, uh, giggy transmissions here using simple uh, modulation methods in, in single RF channels. Okay, some of the other characteristics, uh, these are line of sight point-to-point uh, -point links, the short distances, the 60 gigahertz, typically distances are under a mile with 80 gigahertz, somewhere up to five miles, and that's kind of uh, always make the caveat depending on, on where you are uh, in the country or in the world and what uh, and how intense the rain is. The rain is really the only uh, factor that affects uh, the, the link uh, distances and link budgets, uh, unlike FSO where you might have fog um, or dust or, or other anomalies. Um, snow doesn't affect it. It's, it's really just a, it's just the rain rate and where you're at. Um, then with proper link planning, and we'll actually go through a link planning exercise here toward the end of the slides. Um, you, know, you can get the, certainly get the carrier grade five nines availability. Uh, these uh, these giggy radios. Uh, some of our products also uh, have the ability to do giggy plus multiple Sonnet uh, or SDH interfaces. I'll talk about that here in in a minute. And on the next slide here, we'll talk about the narrow pencil beam antennas um, because these uh, because of the characteristics of these uh, millimeter wave transmissions, short distances, highly focused uh, beams. Um, interference is, is seldom an issue, um, either causing interference or being interfered with is seldom an issue at these frequencies. And as you can kind of see, the, the small all-outdoor form factor. Okay. You see this particular example here, you've got a, a, a 60 gig radio mounted up on top of a, a street, uh, street pole. Okay. okay, so let's just uh, take a look at the antennas with the millimeter wave frequency bands. Um, you've got very narrow beam antennas, and typically you're talking just uh, small one or two foot antennas here. Um, and uh, you kind of see the image on the uh, right hand side kind of contrasts a, say, an unlicensed 5.8 gigahertz radio and the beam divergence at, say, a mile versus a 60 gigahertz radio beam divergence at a mile. Um, so you can kind of uh, infer from that that uh, with the very narrow focused beams of the 60 gig products, it, uh, it's not going to pick up energy. 
um, uh, uh, as far as, as, as say a 5.8 gigahertz radio well so the the likelihood of of being interfered with or interfering with somebody um, at these frequency bands is, is very small. This allows you to also co-locate multiple terminals, so you can uh, you can have multiple uh, systems at a single location. We've got a customer down in the Arizona uh, area that's got uh, 14 of these uh, on a single tower. Um, this is school district, and uh, no no interference issues there at all. Okay, with. Uh, you know, from a hardware perspective, if if you look at some of the uh, if you look at the ways of doing gigabit Ethernet, uh, full rate giggy over over the microwave frequency bands, um, traditionally there are multiple radios involved, multiple RF channels, certainly multiple licenses, um, and significantly less than gigabit Ethernet rates. So in in the traditional lower frequency microwave. Uh, you can probably get somewhere between 350 and 400 megabits uh, in a single 50 or 56 megahertz uh, channel uh, using, say, high order 256 QAM modulation. To go beyond 400 megabits, uh, a second radio is usually involved, whether it's a second indoor unit or a second carrier. Um, there, there's multiple hardware uh, uh, iterations that you've got to use to aggregate those uh, capacities to a higher um, to a higher data rate, uh, as well as you might have to do things like uh, combining different uh, ODUs onto a single antenna using uh, cross-pole interference cancellation technologies, um, things like that. And, and certainly, in, depending on where you are, uh, the multiple licenses uh, can also add to the overall cost of the solution. With millimeter wave solutions, here on the bottom, it's, it's one all-outdoor radio, one, one fiber to the radio, uh, one RF channel, uh, you get full giggy plus rates, um, and for example, 60 gigahertz here in the U.S. and Canada is is license free, uh, so uh, no no licenses for that. Okay, let's talk about planning a giggy wireless link. Uh, you've got a site. You know, the first thing you want to do these are all line of sight uh, solutions, so you've got to have line of sight between point A and point B. Um, you've got the placement, you find, figure out where the placement of the ODUs and the antennas are uh, to get you that line of sight, bringing copper and fiber from, say, the switch or from the base station up to the, the ODU, um, and, and you might have some kind of a UPS or battery backup there uh, for, the, uh, for uninterrupted uh, transmission here. You can find the distance between the buildings using Google Earth uh, to get the uh, coordinates. Um, you can use the path tool in Google Earth to map the distance. Um, and you can perform, perform a link budget calculation, and we have the tools to help you that. Our alliance, our partner, also has uh, folks on staff that uh, have these tools that can help you plan uh, your link. Um, last but not least, there's always BridgeWave's website where you can go on to our website, click on the uh, Giggy link analysis here. It's no obligation. Um, feed, the, feed the information into the, uh, into the form. I think it just asks for some street addresses, some contact information, uh, and then we take it from there and we'll run a, uh, a calculation to see you know, which, uh, which product actually uh, will, will serve you best and find that uh, nice balance between cost and, uh, uh, and performance there for you. And so, for example, you have a gigi connection between two buildings on campus. You know, do you have line of sight? Uh, using Google Earth here, yes, I do have line of sight uh, looking at just under a half a mile. Um, are there adequate places to mount the ODUs and the antennas on the roofs of these buildings? Uh, yes, there are. So then let's proceed with the link planning. And we've got a link budget calculator. Again, our, our partners at Alliance have the same tools here. Um, what we do is we just uh, select a few parameters here. For example, we'll, we'll enter in the distance. We'll um, select the type of product we're using, the, uh, the, the data rate, uh, and then the, the region. For example, this is in Ottawa. Uh, and then, you know, give it the site A and site B a name, uh, looking at the antennas, the output power, uh, if there's there a couple are involved. And then down here are, are the results. And this particular example, this uh, under, uh, under half a mile example in Ottawa using our 60 gig product still yields uh, carrier grade of uh, four nines and a five um, connectivity there. Okay. So just kind of wrapping it up here, you know, gigabit Ethernet wireless links says, kind of just to sum this all up here, it allows you to significantly outperform copper-based alternatives. So when you're looking at uh, you know, multiple T1s or DS3 or, 
or even some fiber-based alternatives, say say 100 meg or or even um, or even giggy fiber. Uh, we're we're on par with uh, giggy fiber, and we can significantly provide higher uh, connections of speeds, uh, and and that same low latency that you have with uh, with fiber uh, through these giggy wireless links. We see that, as, as you saw in the uh, slides earlier here, we can eliminate rec recurring lease line transmission charges. So really um, helping, helping your budgets today and tomorrow by providing you a much more rapid return on investment than, say, continuing to have to pay uh, the, uh, the, the, the service provider for leasing those fiber connections. Um, Giggy wireless links go in quickly in a couple of days as opposed to, say, weeks or months for the service provider to get connections to your facility. Um, and you've got that built-in capacity for future applications. Um, you can also start off with, uh, say, a 100 meg product, and we'll get into the products here just a, in just a minute. Uh, but you can start off with a lower speed, say, fast Ethernet connection, and then uh, upgrade to giggy speeds uh, at a later date. Really, the, the you know, Giggy wireless links also allow you to control your own infrastructure. So you get to plan when you're going to put these systems in, when you need to, uh, on your terms, on your time. Uh, and, and finally, you control your costs. So you, you've got uh, control of both your CapEx and, and, your, and your OpEx budgets uh, for years to come. Okay. Okay, so let's just uh, wrap it up here, kind of talk about BridgeWave Communications. We've been around since 1999. Uh, we've delivered our first uh, gigabit wireless solution in 2003 at 60 gigahertz, uh, and then followed up uh, a couple of years later with 80 gigahertz solutions. Um, and in the, last, uh, in the last three years, we've been the high-capacity wireless backhaul choice uh, for service providers and um, and enterprise uh, customers uh, here in the U.S., uh, in North America, as as well as uh, in other parts of the world here. Uh, we are the market leader in gigi wireless transport. A uh, number of analysts who follow us um, put their reports together, and they're all showing BridgeWave is the market leader in this space here. Looking at FCC registrations here for 70 and 80 gigahertz products in the U.S., uh, two out of every three radios registered last year uh, in the uh, 70, 80 gigahertz space with the US FCC um, uh, are BridgeWay products here. So we've got over 10,000 of these gigi wireless solutions deployed in over 50 countries. And you can kind of see some of the uh, customers there in the different vertical markets of service providers, you know, customers like AT&T, Sprint, uh, Clearwire, uh, Time Warner, TowerStream, municipalities. Uh, we talked about the Dallas Police Department, the city of Phoenix, uh, Richmond, Virginia, um, the city of Southlake in Dallas, and the enterprise space, uh, a number of, of, of uh, Fortune uh, 100 and 500 uh, companies in the enterprise space using our product for campus uh, connectivity, um, in the government space, uh, the healthcare space, uh, and in the education space. So uh, used quite a bit across a variety of different vertical markets there. Uh, we, we, we just focus really on high capacity backhaul. That's the, the, the bridge wave we were uh, we, we built uh, a great product line that focuses on providing giggy solutions uh, and the feature sets uh, needed for these, uh, these giggy solutions here. Uh, we talked about it being a wireless alternative to fiber um, by microwave and millimeter wave frequencies uh, with a lot of the performance and reliability and security of fiber. Um, with, the, with the TCO, we talked about the ROI and, and certainly being faster deploy. Uh, you know, across you know, mobile backhaul, fixed network expansion, and the, and the enterprise uh, space. Our 60 gigahertz products, just to, to kind of uh, wrap up our, our products here, uh, we have uh, products at 60 gigahertz that do what we call uh, gigabit Ethernet, that's our GE60, our fast Ethernet, the FE60, um, which is upgradable to what we call uh, GIGI and AR functionality. Adapt rate AR60 uh, has the ability to operate at gigabit speeds and then throttle down to, say, 100 megabit fast Ethernet speeds during periods of inclement weather. Um, and then after the inclement weather, uh, it'll ratchet back up to GIGI speeds. It's all done automatically uh, with, uh, with, with these products here. We also have the ability on those AR products to do 256-bit AES encryption built into the radio. Um, the, the benefit being that you don't have to have an external encryptor uh, for that uh, to, to do that. At 80 gigahertz, uh, same, uh, uh, same nomenclature there, uh, GE, AR, FE, 
Um, and then uh, another uh, product there is our BW80. So our BW80 allows us to start off at 125 megs. Uh, and then upgrade in capacity when you're ready to upgrade. Uh, so you can start off uh, with a with a low capex uh, at, at the 125 megs, and then as your uh, network or the backbone needs to be increased in capacity, uh, you can just uh, unlock it through a software license all the way up to uh, full gig e speeds. Um, the X is really just the extended range version of the products there. Uh, with uh, the difference being in the antenna size is a one foot or 30 centimeter uh, for the uh, standard product um, and a 24 inch or 60 centimeter antenna for the um, extended range products there. On the some of the newer products that we brought to market over the last year or so, the Flexport 80, it's really designed for next gen mobile backhauls, optimized for uh, these uh, 4G networks that are coming out uh, today, uh, both in North America, uh, over in Europe, we're seeing a lot of uh, attraction with uh, 4G, LTE, uh, and even WiMAX networks. Um, so it's really a product optimized for network uh, backhaul. This product has the ability to do four OC3 or four STM1, depending on where you are in the world, uh, connections as well as uh, GIGI uh, IP connectivity here, and it does it all simultaneously natively uh, within the radio here. And this, uh, we actually extend it up to uh, 1,200 megabits uh, as opposed to just a full rate 1,000 megabits. So 1,200 megabits uh, user throughput over the air. Um, with the 2400 megabits with uh, the Flexport 83000, which is over on the right. Um, the Flexport product family says frequency agile RF tuning, so you can actually tune the product anywhere in the uh, 70, 80 gigahertz space. Uh, uses a little bit higher order modulation, more spectrally efficient QPSK modulation. Um, has the adapt rate modulation functionality we just talked about. Carrier Ethernet network management, uh, these products have a built in layer 2 switch that does advanced QoS and VLAN uh, as well as handle jumbo packets up to uh, 10,000 byte packets um, and also the, uh, the 256 bit AES encryption. Over on the uh, right hand side you see the Flexport 83000, so it's 3 gigabits um, over the air transmission and equates to about 2.4 gigabits of user throughput. Um, this is the highest throughput of any microwave or millimeter wave solution on the market today without the need for compression. Um, and it avoids the use of, of uh, OMTs, it still maintains frequency agile RF tuning, the spectrally efficient QPSK modulation, um, and uh, as I mentioned there, the carrier class Ethernet feature sets uh, because it's got the uh, built-in uh, layer 2 switch. Uh, we've just introduced a microwave product uh, not too long ago. It's, um, products that operate in the 18 and 23 gigahertz uh, frequency range and these products are full rate, uh, full giggy uh, com um, compliant there where we can do um, uh, full giggy transmissions um, in a single all outdoor unit. Uh, we have the, the way they do that is they actually uh, have multiple carriers so think of them as three radios in one unit so we actually can transmit three different RF channels uh, each one of those RF channels at 50 megahertz uh, channel bandwidth using about 330 megabits per second per carrier. Uh, we aggregate that up to a full gig e speed. So it allows you that full gig e connection in the microwave uh, frequency space. Um, fuel pluggable SFPs so you can do a single mode, multi mode, or copper. Um, uh, same advanced QoS features that are in the uh, Flexport 80 product. Um, same uh, 256 bit AES encryption. And really the, the unique benefit of this for, uh, for customers, service providers in the enterprise space is there's uh, no additional hardware needed for full gig uh, transmission rates. So as, as you saw in the, in the slide earlier, uh, to get the full gig -E speeds at these frequencies, you've got to aggregate uh, multiple pieces of hardware. Um, and more often than not, uh, when you go to do that, you've got to climb the tower to add that second outdoor unit. With the Flexport Microwave, we we bypass all that because the circuitry is already built into the radio to allow full gig -E transmissions. And then last week at the uh, CTIA show, we unveiled our Pico Hall, uh, our, our small cell uh, backhaul product. Uh, so full rate gig -E, uh, and you kind of see this is a product that uh, operates at 60 gig. It's about 4 inches in diameter, about 15 inches high. Um, but it's meant for small cell, under half a mile connectivity uh, for, for next gen networks here. Okay, uh, so just kind of wrapping it up here, I think I've just got a, a couple more slides. 
Uh, some of the innovation that we have at BridgeWave, like I said, we've been doing this since about uh, 2003. We've been shipping these uh, Gigi products here. Um, the first to the market with uh, implementing forward error correction at these millimeter wave frequency bands. Uh, adapt rate uh, and adapt path are two very important features that uh, uh, that customers use when they're when they're looking for a solution that has uh, that maximizes the, the the link availability or even maximizes the giggy distances here. We talked about the ability to throttle back to fast Ethernet during periods of inclement weather, and then ratcheting it back up to speeds. Uh, giggy speeds after the rain subsides. The adapt path, what that does is it actually allows you to put a secondary link on uh, to to actually have that uh, that resiliency um, if the if the rain is just uh, too much for uh, for that distance here. So we can actually augment that with a with a secondary link, uh, hence the, the term adapt path. 256-bit uh, AES encryption, the optional feature on these products here, allows you that extra layer of security. Um, as opposed, and it's a, it's a very small incremental price as opposed to going out and purchasing um, uh, Gigi encryptors uh, and, and having to install and maintain those. Our, our wireless products all have a built-in uh, Ethernet switch. Um, gives you that ability to do add drop capabilities at, at a facility. Uh, you can do in-band and out-of-band management. So the switch is actually important from a, from a maintenance standpoint because you can also uh, do detailed port statistics uh, as well as you certainly have the, the QoS on the flex port, the, the QoS and the VLAN uh, capabilities with the, uh, with the switch there. Um, BridgeWave, we bring the product to the market that allow you to start off small at say 100 megs and then through a software upgrade when you're ready, upgrade them to a full GIGI capacity so you can start off uh, only at 100 meg uh, and with a, with a smaller budget and then as, as the network grows and the need comes to um, uh, enable giggy capacities over the link, uh, you can pay for that later. So um, it will allow you the ability to grow as your network grows. With our Flexport product, a number of innovative features that we brought to market, the, uh, the ability to do multiple uh, OC3s plus the giggy uh, over a single 80 gigahertz channel with our Flexport 80, uh, the ability to do frequency agility, have a higher order modulation uh, with the uh, Flexport 80, um, being able to do full rate giggy microwave uh, transmissions uh, in the 18 and 23 gigahertz with our with our new microwave solutions and our small cell backhaul solutions for unobtrusive uh, 60 gigahertz uh, transport here. So with that, I think I'm done. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, encourage you if you've got questions, go ahead and, and type them in there, and uh, Lisa will uh, certainly uh, read back the questions, and, and Tom uh, and I will be happy to answer questions that you have. I uh, just uh, point out on this last slide here for more information on our products, uh, you can kind of see the uh, bridgewave.com um, uh, website where you can look at uh, white papers, uh, case studies, uh, and download data sheets. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter uh, at Bridgewave. And um, you know, I guess I'll turn it over to Lisa now for questions. Uh, well, yeah, just a couple of, uh, Lisa, do you have Sorry. any questions, Lisa? Yeah, we actually had one question, and it was answered in the um, presentation. So the okay. question was, what is the maximum distance for a point-to-point -point length with Giggy? Okay, good deal. Yeah, so uh, just to expand on that, really um, depends on where you are in the, uh, in the, in the country or the world, and it's, it's a function of what, uh, what rain region you're in. Um, and, and then what your target availability might be. So typically we see on average customers plan 60 gig links under a mile or so. Uh, there's a unique phenomena at 60 gigahertz where the oxygen molecules resonate at 60 gigahertz and so you've got a, a, a very high uh, path attenuation at 60 gigahertz where uh, we're after about a mile and a half the signal just drops out completely. Um, which is one of the reasons why here in the U.S. and Canada, the, the regulatory bodies, um, Industry Canada and the FCC, decided to make it unlicensed. Uh, so a 60 gigahertz is great for short range, uh, very high capacity connections. Uh, 80 gigahertz, on the other hand, uh, is good for, say, up to three to five miles. Um, we, we've got some installations at eight, eight miles uh, distance uh, using two-foot antennas using our adapt rate functionality. Um, but in general, I'd say two to three miles would be the sweet spot for 80 gigahertz uh, connections. With our microwave products, um, 
we, we just introduced to the market uh, uh, earlier this year, the microwave solutions can actually extend those distances now five to ten miles. Uh, and again, a fun that's a, a function of the uh, where you're at in, in the in the U.S. Um, or Canada, or Mexico, um, and, and also the antenna size. Certainly, in the 18, 23 gigahertz uh, ranges, you, you can uh, you can get in, uh, larger antennas help with the uh, link budget. Um, so, if, hopefully, that answers that question. Thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah, that's okay. it. We don't have any more questions. All right. Okay. Well. Uh, Tom Fairskin, I just want to thank everybody for coming on. And just, just a couple of quick comments. Um, personally, I've been involved with BridgeWave for over 10 years now, originally as an integrator back in the uh, early 2000s. And, you know, this product first came out as the, the big blunt hammer. You needed capacity to get from point A to point B, and this was the product to do it. But over the last uh, decade, we've seen that BridgeWave has pretty much filled all the gaps in terms of giving you a lot of different types of flexibility with this product line. Uh, both 1680 gig, and now with the introductions of the lower frequency microwave uh, 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 spectrum out, uh, we can now do longer and longer shots at native gig e speed. So uh, this gives the service providers and also the uh, integrators and the end users out there uh, a lot more flexibility in what they can do in the air now. And um, it's really exciting to be uh, attached to a company like BridgeWave. Um, if there are any uh, integrators out there that have not used this product yet, you can contact us and we can get you uh, signed up for their channel program. Uh, anybody needs information out there, please feel free to contact myself or hit our website. And again, thank you very much, Joe, and thanks for everybody coming on board. You should get an email shortly with uh, a, a, a link to pick this presentation up off the web. All right? All right. Anything All right, else, Lisa? Uh, just one more thing. Uh, we're going to be holding our next webinar on the 27th of April, uh, as Tom already mentioned. And in the follow-up email, I'll include information on how you can register for that webinar. Thanks, nope. thanks okay. everybody. Th thanks again, Tom and Lisa, for, for having us on today. It's been a pleasure to uh, be able to bring our solutions uh, to, to the folks out there in the audience. And, uh, you know, uh, again, Tom, you got, got the uh, contact information here on the screen. Certainly be happy to uh, help out with any of the uh, uh, Gigi Wireless uh, projects that you have there. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.